Yar! Never underestimate the cunning of a pirate. Or a fox, for that matter. Yar! I came for ye booty. That be treasure, you know. I can't run like I used to, but I can pull myself apart just fine. Arr, so much more spacious in here. I may stay a while. It's not my fault. I have these fat plastic fingers and can't press the buttons. Mr. Hugs got me again. If I get jump scared, you get jump scared. That game was totally rigged. That's what you get for leaving me hanging. Where's my beak? Lodged in your forehead, of course. You won't get tired of my voice, will you? Let's go somewhere more private. So I can eat you. <laughs> you won't get tired of dying, will you? I never thought I'd make it through that vent, but now we are together. Let me show you how to break your face and look like me. I was the first. I have seen everything. Come closer. Let's smile together. I have seen him, the one you shouldn't have killed. You blinked. Why is this you, Chris? Is it me trapped? Or is it you? Perhaps it is us both. I may be missing my face, but even I could see his talk. Time to face the consequences of your failure. Might as well face the facts you were always destined to fail. Seeing you powerless is like music to me. I don't hate you, but you need to stay out of my way. I recognize you, but I'm not afraid of you. Not anymore. The others are under my protection. The others are like animals, but I am very aware. Let me put you back together, then take you apart all over again. Let's see how many times you can be pulled apart. I assure you, I am very real. This time, there is more than an illusion to fear. We know who our friends are, and you are not one of them. Scooping room? I guess you forgot about me. I could hear you, breathing. Admit it, you wanted to let me in. Why do you hide inside these walls? Don't be shy. These are strange circumstances that have brought us together. It seems you couldn't make it to my show, so I brought the show to you!
Show times are on the hour. Not a moment before and not a moment later. It's time to take your final bow. I'm sorry, but there was never enough room on this stage for both of us. A performance was demanded of me, and now I have delivered. Encore! Psst, I have something to tell you. Hey, hey, I want to tell you something. Psst, hey, over here. Get closer. Excuse me, can you come a little closer? Hey, down here. Hello, I wanted to ask you something. It's something really important. I bet you weren't expecting me, were ya? Turn your back for one second and I'm like, was you? Ninja skills. You and I don't get to talk as often as I'd like. Everyone underestimates me. But then they turn their back and I'm like, boo. And they're like, what? Move over, Freddy Fazbear. Happy Frog is the new star of the show. We've only just begun. I will never let you leave. I will never let you rest. My friend, you have met a terrible, terrible demise. But, uh, you know, I, I don't feel too bad about it. After all, if, if it weren't from me, it would have just been from someone else, you know? I guess what I'm trying to say is life, life goes on. Well, well from, for everyone else, life goes on. Not, not for you. You're, you're dead. But that's neither here nor there. It reminds me of one summer day in the park. I was having just a delightful picnic with my good friend Orville. And I said to him, I said, Orville, I, I have a story. And he said to me, what's the significance of the story? And I said to him, Orville, not every story has to have significance, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes a story is just a story. If you try to read into every little thing and find meaning in everything anyone says, you'll just drive yourself crazy. I had a friend do it once. Wasn't pretty. We talked about it for years. And not only that, but you'll likely end up believing something you shouldn't believe and thinking something you shouldn't think or, or assuming something you shouldn't assume, you know? Sometimes, I said, uh, a story is, is just a story. So just be quiet for one second of your life and eat your sandwich, okay? Of course, it was only then I realized I'd made sandwiches, and poor Orville was having such difficulty eating it. Elephants have those clumsy hands, you know. Actually, I, I suppose that's the problem. They don't have hands at all, do they? They're, they're all feet. I, I, I couldn't imagine someone asking me to eat a sandwich with my feet. Now, if I recall correctly, there was a bakery nearby. I, I said to him, Orville... Uh, let me go get you some rye bread. Now, I'm unsure if elephants enjoy rye bread, but I assure you that Orville does. Now, this was on a Tuesday, which was good because rye bread was always fresh on Tuesday. They made sourdough bread on Monday and threw it out Wednesday, or rather they sold it at a discount for people wanting to feed the ducks, and then probably at the end of the day, finally, they threw it all out. I, I don't recall. I do remember a man who would bring his son to the bakery every Wednesday and then go feed the ducks. He would buy all of the sourdough bread. Of course, you know, you're not supposed to feed the ducks sourdough bread at all. It swells up in their stomach and then they all die. It, uh, at least, at least that's what I've heard. You know, I, I never saw any ducks die myself, but I did notice a substantial decrease in the duck population over the course of a few years. I just never thought to stop the man and tell him that he was killing the ducks by feeding them sourdough bread. And if you want my opinion on the matter, <laughs> and I told Orville this as well, if you want to feed ducks or birds or any kind for that matter, it's best to buy seed. I mean, when you think about it, breads of any sort don't occur in nature. They don't grow on trees or spring up from the bushes. I don't think birds know what to do with bread. What was I saying? Oh, oh, yes, yes. So I bought Orville some rye bread. What a fine day it was. Ah, uh, it seems that you have met your end. Oh, what a pity. You know, I, I don't feel too bad about it, though. After all, if it weren't me, it would have just been one of the others, I guess. And I'm honestly just glad to be out of those air ducts. You know, it's, 
It's not easy for a hippopotamus to fit up there, and not easy to get down either, and not as young as I used to be, as you can see. I used to be able to do all the sorts of things. You're young, you're vibrant, you have that sort of pep in your step. Uh, it reminds me of a conversation I was having with one of my good friends, Orville. We were having a nice picnic one day. I believe it was summer, no, perhaps it was... Was it the fall? Yes, 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 it was the fall because the leaves had turned already. But I said to Orville, I, I says, Orville, I have a story to tell you. And Orville looked at me, you know, kind of odd and, and said, well, what's it about? I, I said to him, not every story has to be about something, Orville. Sometimes a person just wants to talk. Why does everything have to be a story? I said to him. He just looked at me and he said, well, you, you, you said you had a story and you know, he was quite right. I did, in fact. I told him I had a story. I suppose if a person just wants to talk, then it's best to not announce that you're telling a story. Telling a story does come with its own pressures and expectations, I, I suppose. After all, if you're just talking to a friend, then there's no more expectations than if you were talking into the wind. Words by themselves aren't expected to carry, aren't expected to stick. But if, you know, if you announce you're telling a story, well then, there'd better be a point to it all, you know? No one wants to sit and listen to someone ramble on and on and on with absolutely no end in sight. So, you know, it's, it's good to be mindful that when you tell someone that you're about to tell a story, that you have something to say. Telling someone that you're going to tell them a story is tantamount to asking them to stop what they're doing and, and pay attention. You're basically saying, hey, hey, hey buddy, stop everything. Stop what you're thinking. I have a solution to everything. And well, I didn't really have any story to tell. In, in hindsight, I, I probably just misspoke when I said that I had a story. I think it would have just been better to tell Orville that I wanted to tell him something rather than tell him that I had a story. But you know, even then, it might have put too much importance on the whole thing. Either way, it was quite a nice day. I remember, I remember that we were drinking tea. Well, uh, it seems that your journey has ended. Very sorry about that. It was, it was always going to end this way, of course. If it weren't by me, it would have just been by some other, you know, terrible thing. Just, you could not imagine how terrible it would be. Just, I get scared thinking about it. I'm glad it's not me. It reminds me of a, of a time I was speaking to my good friend Orville. We were, we were sitting on a park bench watching the pigeons. I was on the left, he was on the, oh wait, was I on the right? Or left? Anyways, it doesn't matter. We were sitting on there watching the pigeons. And, uh, I, I said to Orville, Friend, those birds are frozen. And he kind of looked at me like I'd lost my mind. But I reminded him that it was winter, you know, and often birds will sit in a tree until they freeze. And then they, they you know, sort of fall to the ground until the sun warms up and, and they can, you know, move around again. So I said to Orville, you would might as well save those breadcrumbs until the birds thaw because they can't very well enjoy them in the condition they're in. To which he asked what I meant, and asking what condition the crumbs should be in before he threw them to the birds, assuming that I meant the birds couldn't enjoy the bread crumbs in the condition that the crumbs were in, when in fact I had meant the birds could not enjoy them in the condition that the birds were in, considering that the birds were frozen. You know, so he took a moment and then threw his last handful onto the ground. I said to him, Orville, why did you throw the breadcrumbs to the birds when I just told you they're frozen? To which he responded, The breadcrumbs are not frozen. Again, misunderstanding my words. I didn't mean to say that the breadcrumbs were frozen when I said I told you they're frozen. I'd been referring to the birds. <laughs> you know, in hindsight, what, what I should have said was, and this would make perfect sense, Why did you throw the breadcrumbs to the birds when the birds are frozen? He misunderstood upon my correction, stating that he didn't know what else to do with the breadcrumbs and that perhaps, you know, when the birds thawed, they'd still be able to eat the crumbs. So I, I, I said to Orville, I said, and this is what I said to him, I said, Orville, the birds may be dead. <sighs> it seems that you have met a, a horrible demise, my friend. 
but uh, you know these these things happen and, and life life goes on not for you obviously you're you're dead but uh, it reminds me of a time I was I was having a conversation with my friend Orville we were uh, where were we I think we were by the with the, the river we were sitting by the river and watching the fish leap over the falls and uh, I, I said to Orville you know sometimes I feel like a fish leaping over and over again always trying to get somewhere though the talented hawk hides his claws I consider it a dignified death not really. It was actually quite pathetic. If you sit by the river long enough, you will see the body of your enemy float by. <laughs> Even monkeys fall from trees. The nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Stranger danger! <laughs> I was just waiting for you to drop your guard. Whoops! That's gonna leave a mark. This is how it feels, and you get to experience it over and over and over again. Forever. I will never let you leave. Don't you hate getting killed by obscure secondary characters? What did you think of my act? I don't get out much, so you'll have to forgive my enthusiasm. I hope you enjoyed the grand finale. Now is my time to shine. He tried to release you. He tried to release us. But I'm not going to let that happen. I will hold you here. I will keep you here, no matter how many times they burn us. Please deposit five coins. Please deposit five coins. Please deposit five coins. Thank you for depositing five coins. You are attempting to trick Freddy. You are attempting to... Freddy doesn't like... What a treat to come here and me. Your base and the hits concrete. I found my guitar, now reach for the stars as I plunge it through your heart. Why so blue? You know I'll be true, and now I'll make slippers out of you. So good to see you again, my truest friend, but now. Stand. What a fine day to come here and say that your face and flesh I must play. Thought you could fool me with that sign, but I was too smart for you. I may not like wet floors, but the smell of fresh meat is just too enticing. <laughs> Whoops, looks like you're the one that slipped up this time. That's right! And don't you come back now, you hear? That'll teach you for trying to trick this old bird. How may I be of service to ya? Yar, who touched me bird? Yar, me bird likes you. So I'll do ye a favor. Yar, what can I do for ya? You hear that? It's the sweet, sweet sound of your eternal silence. Hey, keep it down, would ya? When I'm here, you play by my rules. A song was requested of me, and now I sing it. You and I will be making music together for a long, long time. <laughs> Time for your controlled shock. Let's see how many pieces I can cut you into. You won't die, but you'll wish you could. Time for your controlled shock. I always come back. Shh. There is room for one more. Shh. Come spend eternity 
inside.